Hello everybody, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new game that I'm going to be trying called This War of Mine. This War of Mine is basically about... Oh god, it's so loud. Ugh, too loud. Okay, I think this is better. Um, this game is about the civilian side of wars and how devastating wars are on people and how um, negatively wars affect the lives of people and what the people have to do to survive those hardships and dark times. It, it has a kind of a roguelike kind of feel to it, you know, you're, it's permadeath and if you fail, you fail and your adventure is over. And you're basically going to be playing with different characters who are going to live in a house together and have to take care of different needs and survive and, you know, fight against the elements like cold and hunger and disease and all that stuff and burglars and different things that come up randomly. So, as soon as I started, you're going to get a better feeling of it and understand what's going on better. So, let's, uh, let's start a new game. We, we have two storylines right now available to us, and there are two more scenarios to play later, but let's start with the first scenario, where, it's, where we're going to be playing as Kate, uh, Katya, Bruno, and Pavla. I think it's Katya, Bruno, and Pavle. Pavle? Pavle? We're going to go with Pavle, because <laughs> it sounds good. We'll, we'll find out, we'll find out. Yes, I, I had a game before this, but since I haven't played much of this game, it's, it's okay, I can just get rid of it. It's a hard game. Day one. Fuck the war. It's a really dark and depressing kind of game, but also very beautiful with this, this very special kind of um, pencil art style, and the music is also very mellow and dark and... Um, Filled with melan uh, melancholy. <laughs> I was gonna say melancholy. <laughs> melancholy. What is melancholy? All right. So these are our guys, basically, on the screen right now. I think that's Katya. When the civil war broke out, many people thought it would only last a couple of weeks. It's been years since government and military surrounded the rebels in the capital, cutting off all supply lines. The civilian population trapped in the city are suffering from hunger, disease, and shelling. Katya met both Pavle and Bruno before the war. She used to be a reporter, while Bruno had his own television cooking show. I think this is Bruno. Pavle was a star of a local football team. Katya even interviewed him once. Now they meet in dramatically different circumstances, looking for food and shelter. Alright, so... Oh, they speak. A few improvements can be, can, uh, and it can be livable. I think they're talking about the house. I hope we'll manage to keep it warm in here. Okay, so there's time in the game, there's temperature, and uh, there are turns. So the days are the turns, and we can select different people to do different things in the house. And um, there, there's rubble to be put away, there are rooms to be searched, and items to be found in, in, in our very home. And right now... What we're going to do is we're going to try to... First of all, what do we have? Some thoughts. Our shelter is one depressingly ugly ruin. We should do something about it. We only have one chair. We like beds and we have to sleep on the floor. It's hard to get a good night's sleep on hard, cold concrete. And the condition of those who are sick or wounded may dr drastically worsen. Uh, we don't have a radio. We don't know what's going on in the city. We really miss books. A good book could help us forget the horrors of war. Staying here is slightly better than living on the streets. We like coffee and cigarettes. We have uh, breaches in the walls. Our shelter is not safe. And we have to constantly be on guard. Okay, so this kind of summarizes how our guys are doing right now and the condition of the living space and um, accommodations and conveniences. So, we definitely need beds, we need warmth, we need books, we need coffee and cigarettes, and we need a radio. Some of those things are going to be easy to, uh, to manage. So, I'm going to have Pavla. Bas uh, also, 
it's worth reading their bios individually. Pavle, fast runner. So this is his trait in the game, so it's gonna come in handy to know what each of these guys are capable of. Before this whole mess begun, I lived with my wife and son in the better part of the city. I haven't seen them in a long time. I hope they are okay. I'm not doing so well, as you can see. Who needs football players during war? Nobody cares about sports when every day can be their last. So I scavenged the ruins like everyone else, hoping for the best. It's heartbreaking, guys. It's heartbreaking. Um, I'm gonna have him actually come to this workstation. A workshop, simple workshop. What should I make? So we could make beds, chairs, uh, heater, radio, uh, workshops themselves. Like, cr oh wait, under the workshops category, there's a uh, because you can you have household items and you have workshops, um, re things related to workshops, including a crude stove, moonshine still, metal workshop, rainwater collector, which is, which is going to be very important soon. Uh, but all of these, as you can see, require material. To make filter to make water fuel to probably sanitize water and cook more fuel right oh fuel made out of wood fuel made out of books and fuel made out of random things all right so there's not much we can make but let's uh let's have pablo come and check out this pile of rubble here and we're gonna have bruno he's a good cook but he's a smoker that's why we need the cigarettes before the war, I used to own a restaurant. I even had my own television show, Bruno's Cuisine. I'm sure you've seen it. I visited beautiful places where I was filmed cooking exquisite, exquisite dishes. All that seems of no importance now, don't you think? Nowadays, you're lucky if you get your hands on some canned meat or a bag of rice. And who knows how long this war is going to last? I don't know. You're right, it might last a long time. Well, could you come check this desk out, please? And Katya, she has good bargaining skills because we're gonna come across other people in this adventure, and it's it's a important element in the game to be able to kind of bargain with people for goods. And some people might come to our house asking for different things, like um, and offering different things, and the prices are gonna be sometimes crazy. So we'll see how this how Katya's bargaining skills are gonna come in handy. But she's a coffee drinker, so. For her household to be happy and for her to be satisfied, we're eventually going to have to find an ample supply of coffee. Which is going to be hard. Katya, I grew up in this city. Bob went abroad to study and started working as a reporter. I'd been away for years. When the troubles escalated into a war, I was picked to write reports on it. I'd, vol I, I'd have volunteered anyway. I was so anxious to check on my parents, but I was too late. I found my house in ruins. My family had disappeared. I've been looking for them ever since. She has very sad eyes. Um, we're gonna have... Oh, let's see what um, Bruno found in this little desk. There's... What is this? Herbs, various... Various herbs that can be used to make herbal medications and roll up cigarettes. Oh, great. Yeah, let's take all of them. Take... There's a lockpick. It's single use, but it opens locks quickly and quietly. We'll take that. Um, parts. Various mechanical parts used for building and fixing complex devices. We'll take the three. Sugar. There'd be no moonshine without sugar. Essential for fermentation process. Yes, sir. Electric parts. Some electric parts. They will come in handy if we want to introduce advanced improvements to our shelter. Yep, take that. Alright, let's exit. Bruno, can you also check this uh, little closet here? Katya, I would love for you to check this pile up here. More material, more sugar, more electric parts. We'll exit. I like that it's still in the morning right now. Bruno, come and check out this pile over here. Oh, you're done? Oh, you need a lockpick for that door, don't you? Katya found, ooh, some food, raw food. It's edible, but it would be more nutritious when cooked. Okay, we'll take that. Some herbs, more material. These are components. Various components you need to make just about anything. Nails, duct tape, plastic, containers, scrap, things like that. 14 of them too, that's great. Uh, what is this? Wood, an essential component for all kinds of stuff. Plus we can chop it to fuel stoves and heaters. Perfect. Pavle, 
Is this door open? Yeah, that's, that door is open. Come check out this pile for me real quick. Bruno found more stuff. Herbs, material, sugar, wood. We're going to grab all of it. And we're going to have Bruno go and... Oh, this door is... What is wrong with this door? Is this door busted? Oh, we need to, like, take all the junk off of it. It's going to take a while. Well, that wasn't too hard. All right, could you come and check this uh, desk again? And Katya, let's go check out... Uh, oh, we'll see. Ooh, there's some clean water. It's great. Let's grab all of this. Katya, that door needs a pick. Can we even make it upstairs? How can we get up? Oh, there's a ladder here. All right. Um, come check out this rubble pile here. And you clean this pile. There's a lockpick, more material, more clean water, some wood. We'll take all of this. And Bruno is just about done with his pile of looks. Oh no, he's not. He's making small progress. Uh, Katya, I might as well have you work on a rubble pile as well. See what we can find. S oh, Pablo is slightly sick. Well, that's good to know. Well, we should make some medicine. I wonder if we can make medicine and treat him quickly. But we need a bed. He's sick. We have to make a bed so we can rest a little bit. And it's right past noon right now. We're um, steadily approaching early evening. Our guys are tenaciously clawing at the rubble here. Pavla is done. Oh, there's another pile. Well, I'm gonna have Pavle go to the workshop again. To our simple workshop. See if he can make some medicine for himself. What else do we need, at least? Can we even make medicine? It doesn't really look like... We may have to do... No, we can't. No, Boonchai still is not gonna... Do much for us. Allows us to make tools such as shovels for clearing rubbles, crowbars for breaking doors, and knives for self-defense. Later we could use it to build more advanced tools or even repair firearms. What about the stove? It's as uh, simple as it gets. It just burns some fuel made up of wood, books, or components, and use some water to cook a meal more, more nutritious than raw food. So how can I make medicine? Well, let's make a bed first. Bed is gonna take six of our. I think this is just like random material and eight wood. That's fine. It's gonna take an hour to make it. That's totally fine. And we can drag it and place it somewhere. Where should we put it? Let's put it up here above the stairs. Bedrooms upstairs. Okay. All right. Let's place it there. I think he's gonna go up there and make it right there. I think as soon as Bruno's done, I'm gonna have him make a stove, and we're gonna put the stove in the kitchen and cook a good meal. Hopefully, give it to a couple of people, maybe to the sick Pablo. Yeah, he's building the bed right now. Can I zoom in? Oh, I can. How far back can I zoom out? Oh, that's that's pretty good. We get a zoomed-in look at the people. With proper tools, we could what? Couldn't see it. I have a bunch of lockpicks right now, but I think I'm going to hold on to them and decide later what I'm going to use the lockpicks on wisely. Should I actually upgrade my workshop? Maybe I, if I upgrade my workshop, I can make medicine. I need to make water filter as well, like immediately, and water catcher. Rainwater catcher has, has uh, high priority. The upgrade is going to take a lot of stuff. Enables the manufacture of more sophisticated items and appliances, providing us more options to get food or meds. Ooh, and trade goods. Yeah, we're definitely going to make meds. That's a must. And Katya, you cleared the way to the closet, so come and uh, check out what's in here right now. It's getting late a little bit. There's more food material, more herbal medicine material, more water, electrical parts. It's good. It's good. I'm just gonna have Pavle rest right now. There we go. Just relax, brother. You're recovering. That's that's good. He's recovering. 
All right. So our workshop is is upgraded, and I'm gonna have Bruno check it out real quick. There's an armchair. It's a comfortable piece of furniture. If you sit in it with a good book, you can almost forget about the war. Okay. Um. But hold on. Board up. We can board up holes and windows in a building for more protection against looters. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Um. Can I make stove and herbal workshop? It doesn't look like it. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Rainwater collector. Can I do this instead? Oh, I can't do that either. Well, we have some clean water, so I think making food is a little more import important right now. Simple heater allows us to heat the shelter so that we don't get ill. We can prepare fuel for it using wood. Oh, this takes a lot of material. Yeah, we have to make the crude stove. And we're gonna put it in the in the kitchen right here. Next to the fridge. And Bruno's gonna go take care of that real quick. Now the question is where where is Katya going? Is she making an AI decision? Where's she going? What's she doing? I wonder. It's getting pretty late, actually. Oh, so when it's light nighttime, it's just it's just over like that. I see. So here's the second part of the game. After every day, we have the option to go out in the night and try to scavenge different places, and that will give us different things. There's a chance of looting, and there's a chance of running into different encounters and different dramatic scenarios and people. I'm going to let Pavle rest, and Katya, since she has good bargaining skills and a higher capacity in her backpack, I think, I think I'm going to choose her as a person to go out and scavenge, and I'm going to have Bruno guard, because Pavle's sick, and we have holes all over the place, and I don't want anybody to come in and, and hurt us, and we're going to have Katya scavenge. Now, where are we gonna go? So, we have an old town option. The old town used to be a crucible of cultures with this distinct mixture of architectural styles and many great Grazni, Grazni? and Viceni restaurants and pubs. Military positions in the overlooking mountains make it a dangerous place now, but if we take the risk, we might find some supplies here. So there's a chance of finding some food, huge amounts of materials, lots of meds, huge amounts of weapons, and huge amounts of parts. It's a dangerous place. We'll think about it. And there's a looted gas station. This was one of the very first places people looted while fleeing from the city. There had been a few hour uh, long ceasefire intended to clean the whole area from civilians, but it was broken. What? There had been a few hour long ceasefire intended to clean the whole area from civilians? Oh, but it was broken? Many people died, though neither side claimed responsibility to this day. Despite heavy shelling of the whole district, the station is in surprisingly decent shape. It may have been looted, but it might still be worth to check out. So there could be lots of food there, huge amount of uh, materials, some medications, lots of weapons, and lots of parts. And there's the ruined villa. They say some people still live here against all odds. They must have some supplies stocked, like canned food and possibly uh, bandages or medicines. But they don't want to trade. They don't want to trade. If we're desperate, we could try to steal them from the people. Hmm. Lots of food, huge amounts of materials, lots of meds, weapons, parts, and the quiet house. It's in a housing estate that remains almost untouched. Uh, untouched. It's a calm area of little houses with porches and gardens. Most of those houses are still inhabited. People are trying to lead normal lives there. We've got nothing to look for there, unless we're willing to steal. There's food, a ton of food, ton of meds, ton of parts. I'm gonna go to Old Town and see what's going on there. Let's get prepared for this. Oh. Yeah, so we have to get prepared for every scavenging mission that we go on. And it's a good idea to take a weapon if we have any with us. It doesn't look like we have a weapon, but as far as trading with people goes, we could take some herbs with us. Let's uh, divide this up. How can I divide it? What just happened? Is it a matter of shift clicking or like... 
think right clicking is Hold on, I have to I have to learn how to make different piles. Oh, maybe it's just a matter of clicking. All right, I'll take five. No, just four herbs with us. Just one slot. We'll take a little bit of raw food, uh, but not too much. I don't want to. I don't want to lose out on important things too much. Um, maybe one clean water, and these are all just in case we need to bargain with someone if we run into someone. Let's go on a scavenging mission, and hope for the best. Hmm, it looks as though someone reinforced that house, but it seems empty now. Alright, I love this. I love this art. I love that the background is so amazing. You can actually scroll around like this. Uh, there are a few options. And there are some cues when we get closer to the house. Like, even though we can't see inside, we might be able to hear footsteps or different noises. But we don't have a lot of time. We're gonna go and check out this pile of stuff right here. And we have to be smart about what we're going to take. We're definitely going to take components, because we've seen that components come in handy a lot. And we're going to peek through this doorway and see if there's anything behind it that we have to worry about. I, there's just something going on here. Just some sort of sound. It might be a person. It might be an in animal. It might be... It might be different things. But I feel like there's a closed door here. No, that's an open door. No, it's a closed door. No, that's a... Is that open or closed? I can't tell. Let's go inside anyway. Hopefully we won't get in trouble. No, that's a closed door. We're gonna peek through. Yeah, that's just a little mouse. Okay, I'm not worried about that. We just, we just have to be... Kind of cautious because we don't want the mouse to startle anybody else and make them realize there's somebody in our house and they're gonna come after us and kill us! Reinforced door and recent boot prints indicate some people had chosen this building as a refuge before it was hit by a shell. Okay. Where should we go check out first? Let's go check the basement out. That's a huge basement. Yeah, let's go see what's in the basement. Well, that's not a lootable closet. I did step through it. That was great. Let's, let's peek through this door. Make sure that there's nobody here. Yeah, there's another... I think that's a rat. Or the mouse just ran away from where we're standing. Oh, it's barred from the other side. Alright, well, I guess the basement is going to be a no-go unless we find another way to get down. Probably through this... Via this ladder over there in that room. Um, we could try to go upstairs see what's up there yeah let's go check out upstairs before we check out the main floor there's a little desk here we can we can scavenge I'm just worried about running into angry people with guns or batons or something there's nothing there there's nothing there oh it's already past midnight there's nobody in the kitchen or what used to be the kitchen, I should say. Oh, we have to try from the other side. Alright, we'll go upstairs. We'll go upstairs. And if I double-click, my character will, will run, but that's going to get very noisy, and I don't want to alert anybody. Any enemies. What is this? Is that barred? Let's search through this rubble pile. That is a ton of stuff. What is this? Gunpowder? Gunpowder is used to manufacture ammunition and explosive. Yes, we're gonna take that for sure. We're gonna take components and wood. We're already out of space. There's nothing else that we can take from here. But I'm happy with what I've taken right now. Um, let me see if I can go through this door. We might have to build some tools to get through some parts of this house. I could get through this door if I had a saw blade. Okay, so we need a saw blade. And other ways to penetrate these doors over here, but let me check the main floor and then we're just gonna run out from the other side of the house. Wow, I hear gunshots in like the distant. Okay. Looks safe. Ooh, there's a ton of stuff here. The good thing is that we can leave... Oh. 
Oh, well, how about you don't just sit there? Is that a hiding option? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that if we leave the stuff here, they're pro if nobody loots them or steals them, the next time we come back here, they're gonna be here. Oh, wow. What is this? Ammunition. Oh, we have to take ammunition. We have to get rid of this wood. What is this? Cigarettes. Oh, you know who's gonna be very happy about this? Bruno. Skip that for Bruno. Sorry, Wood. We have to get rid of you. Ammunition. Let's take this. What is this? Shell casings. Empty shell casings. If we could, we could make firearm ammo out of them. Okay. You know what? Let's drop some of. Let's drop this component. It's just one component that could have. I mean, it goes up to four. I'm not gonna waste just one slot for one. We're gonna instead take the shells or the shell casings. Some more stuff in this chest of drawer. It looks like we can take three shell casings, casings over there. That's pretty good. Parts. Hmm. I may be able to get rid of the herbs because there's a ton of stuff that I want to take from here. Don't want to get rid of my clean water. I could get rid of some compo components right now to take those parts. I don't know if that's a really smart idea. And I'm gonna get rid of my herbs, because I feel like they're more common. I'm, I'm gonna take these weapon parts. Hopefully all the stuff that I left behind are gonna be there next time I come back so I can take them. Sniper? Is there gonna be a sniper here? Oh, look at this tank. That's a gorgeous model of a tank. I like that. Okay. Yeah, the art is just beautiful. The drawings... Oh, the store is locked. Alright, looks like we have to leave the area as well from the same side that we got in from. Yeah, run to exit. Where are we? There she is. Can I follow her? No. Yeah, she's running away to the exit. Katya's back. Let's see what's new, what's going on. Day 2. Well, coming back home, tonight I had a really good haul. Look what I got, guys. Look what I got. This night was calm. Day log. Katya had been searching for supplies and brought some interesting things. Okay, awesome. Alright, guys. I'm going to pause the game here. We're going to call it an episode right now. And uh, hopefully leaving here is going to save. I'm pretty sure it's saving. But yeah, there you go. So uh, this was this war of mine. I hope you liked it. It's it's very eerie and and depressing and dark, but it's very interesting. It's a very interesting uh, mixture of roguelike, turn-based by days, um, crafting. It's really cool. Story-based. It's really awesome. And it's a different concept. And these guys, uh, War Child, the company who made this game, they are very awesome. They actually had a um what you call it a charity run where uh, a lot of the income that they had from the game purchase went toward actually uh or actual people who were suffering from wars around the world globally and and i have a lot of respect for that so i'm very proud and happy to be playing this game it's a great game and for a good cause and I hope you guys like it too, and leave a thumbs up and if you liked it and enjoyed it, uh, leave comments down below, um, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see the rest of this adventure, and I'll see you guys in the next episode, okay? Goodbye for now, have a good night.